the most amazing comedy of the year. I feel like Billy Eckner has never had just sex. You know what I mean? I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like he's never had sex. He's the he's the gay forty year old virgin. Yes, because that sex scene. In the movie, I'll probably talk about this when we go to talk about it. But that sex scene in the movie did not feel like a, a, a sex scene between two people that had like actual chemistry. That that felt like Billy Eckner's character went on Craigslist, found a dude that was into feet, okay, and wrestling, invited him over, and had hardcore aggressive gay sex that's what that feels like it doesn't feel like a a, a a sex that would happen between two people that are romantically interested in one another well it this, just didn't this movie has a lot of a lot of just premarital sex that's for damn certain so <laughs> yeah this is we're gonna talk oh, about bros going guys down. now any of you if you follow me on twitter you'll know that i lambast this movie um, this is, this, this video is not going to be much different from that. Um, I was specifically lambasting Billy Eckner because he had the gall to go on to Twitter uh, and pro keep promoting this movie, sucking oh the teat of his own cow, <laughs> blames <laughs> the failure of the movie from a a box office perspective on Trumpers and white supremacists. And I so wanted this movie. I so wanted this movie to be good. I so wanted this movie to be good as a fucking queer. I, I don't know if I can say the British cigarette term, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I so wanted this to be good. Because the trailer was very fucking funny. It was so funny. I enjoyed the trailer. That's probably going to give me very weird looks. Because the... But this movie was terrible. Absolutely terrible. This was not a, not a fucking... There were seeds of good ideas. Very tiny poppy seeds of ideas. In those teas were the, those teas. No, those seeds. Those seeds. It, it, the movie took those seeds, right? Took a fucking mallet and just beat them into just dust. Just Absolute beat those seeds. It doesn't plant them in the ground and water them and nurture them. And you don't get to see them flourish and thrive. No, you get to see them thrown in water and roasted, seasoned with salt, and then smashed to pizza. Just, just absolute tiny little microscopic pieces right in front of your face and it's slow it's gradual it's a torture you <laughs> your eyes watch and follow the seat as it's set on the table the hammer rises and smacks down and it's gone seed everywhere okay don't no that's not <laughs> It's not really <laughs> well that's kind of I mean to be fair there was kind of seed everywhere in this movie um <laughs> <laughs> because this bros is such a hypersexual movie that was i mean kind, i mean it was a shying away from that in the trailer but it was it did not prepare me for the amount of there were at least like seven sex scenes in this movie i counted there was like at least seven or eight sex scenes um most of which I mean, were the, not even of the main two leads it was at least one of them, and then one or more men. <laughs> uh, we'll get into that that part later, but yeah, this is an there's an egregious amount of sex scenes, almost I, I, almost to the point where I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should get some you know conversion therapy because <laughs> it it's literally off putting me the gay man to gay sex how do you do that how do you do that how do you do that it, 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 you off put me from it as a movie that isn't 
true i guess well it's kind of a I, I realistically it is a lot of just that as a subject matter but it's really it, it's a fucking gay rom-com and you're overloading the movie with sex wait are you please tell me you're getting this getting what this conversation it's fucking hilarious i'm getting oh no it's recording <laughs> oh because this is great <laughs> No, it's beautiful. No, there's I'm, so much. We get to die talking and reliving this absolute fucking shit show of a movie that's supposed to be a, a gay rom-com. And you put it perfectly. And it makes you hate the gay part of yourself. Oh, yeah, no. Mind you, okay, me, my boyfriend, Anna Kumu, uh, I don't know if I'm... Uh, if you want this to be cut out or not, but literally all of all three of us are the target audience of this movie being LGBT men. Okay. And none of us enjoyed this movie. None of us did. Not a single one of us enjoyed it. We were, if anything, my own boyfriend hated this movie. Like he had oh, nothing yeah, no, good no, to no, say this... about it. <laughs> you and I had like some positive oh things God. to say about it, but yeah, because there were sprinkled, very sprinkled seeds of ideas as you put before, but it does nothing with them. And it, like I, I'm not. Here's the thing: I'm not big on romance movies. Genuinely, I'm not big shock. Right? I'm just. There's only been I think one romance movie that I was able to enjoy. Now, when I came into the to watching this this film. I knew that as a romance movie, I wasn't going to enjoy it. So I, I came from the perspective of people that like romance movies, what kind of romance movies do they like? Okay, so let me view this as someone who at least wants to see a movie that is a romance. Not that sort of like, I don't know how to put it, but like as someone that in trying to look from the perspective of someone that enjoys a romance. Um, and so... I, I've seen other romances before. It's not that I haven't seen them before. I've seen numerous. I just, it, I find a hard time enjoying them. But when it came to this, there was nothing that I could see someone that enjoys a general romance film, like regardless of the sexuality, because the sexuality should dictate the romance. If it does, then, well, is it really romance? I don't think this is really much of a rom, a rom com. Here's the thing: rom coms are not traditional. I don't think a lot of rom coms have sex, or sex scenes. At least, well, not seven of them. Well, not seven of them, definitely. But uh, not a lot of them even have one. I mean, I remember the only I don't watch rom coms. I fucking hate the genre. Really wanted this movie to be good. Fucking hate the rom com genre. Um, an example of a rom-com would be like uh, uh, Fifty First Dates. Fifty First Dates, yeah. Pretty um, much some of Adam Sandler Sandler Sandler's uh, Adam Sandwich's fucking IMDb. <laughs> fucking sandwich. <laughs> I hope that's a meme that exists out there. Adam Sandwich. Yeah, Adam Sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Um, and. But, you know, I, I think to these movies that I do know, there was at least that one rom-com I watched with Nicolas Cage, young Nicolas Cage. And I don't think a single one of them had, like, a major sex scene. This movie oh, has um, seven the of them. The Ryan Reynolds rom-com. The Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds rom-com, yeah. Yeah, there was a Ryan Reynolds rom-com that was that had... A, I can't remember the actress's name. She played in box and uh that's all i know it's not sandra bullock was it yeah no it was sandra bullock. yeah yeah it was sandra bullock and ryan reynolds and they had a rock i don't remember I, I could be wrong i know what you're talking about i just can't remember the name it escapes me i've seen the poster for it that was like uh something marriage yeah i think that was pre fuck i think that was literally pre x-men origins uh ryan reynolds too yeah when he developed his humor when he when he literally became like one of those actors that are thrown into superhero movies and are basically known for those roles and kind of nothing else 
Um, he plays himself pretty much in every role, but his self is entertaining, so. Well, that's, yeah, because it's Ryan Reynolds. Who does not want to fucking, like, talk to Ryan Reynolds, dude? Um, <laughs> Ryan, it's, yeah, it's Ryan Reynolds. And, <laughs> but even, even in that movie, it's like, I can't think of a single sex scene. This movie has seven of them, and somehow nobody's supposed to be disgusted. Especially when we have... Okay, this movie in the first five minutes has a grinder hookup scene between Billy Eckner's character and a random grinder hookup. Like, not even the, uh, the romantic interest. He meets him later at a bar 10 minutes... 10 to 15 minutes into the movie. Like a like a massive like fucking neon lit gay bar with like stud dudes stud dudes everywhere and it's literally just Billy's character and like one other guy that isn't shirtless. Um, but like the fucking sex scenes are fucking egregious as shit. Like there's so many of them, and then they throw in shit which is like very obviously only a gay man would get like fucking billy like takes poppers and shit which very queer thing very like queer culture oriented um does not belong long in a in a gay rom-com at all not a single fucking bit nobody needs to see a motherfucker doing poppers nobody needs to see multiple no there's at least two um orgy scenes in this movie one of these sex oh, yeah. scenes has feet in it i think it's the same fucking one that billy takes poppers in he fucking gets his feet licked by aaron who's the you know that's the romantic interest the who's played by the guy oh you know what you you want to talk about fucking uh, Billy Eckner's character Bobby and Aaron. Oh yeah, and it just just how fucking annoying his character was like a little fucking squirrel oh. you just want to kick. Oh yeah, that's the that's the massive that's the massive problem. Do you want to talk about everybody on on the internet? They go, oh Billy Eckner, he can't carry a movie. There aren't big names in this movie. Yada yada. I could have gotten past that because I'm not somebody who gives a fuck. About a movie needing big name stars. That's such an old Hollywood yeah. thing to think about. Oh my god. Billy's character. He is insufferable. He is unlikable. It may, he, here's what you know what? I can I can sum this up real quick, my thoughts. He made me want to commit a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, realistically with this movie and the way it portrays gay people, it really does not portray gay people very well. It portrays them getting in... All, all of them are fucking stereotypes. They're all Except stereotypes. Aaron. There's, like... Uh, there's... the only, There's bitchy otter otters that act like they're twinks that's a real gay phrase nobody's gonna understand um there's like there's polyamorous relationships which is i don't know a single gay person that's in one of those um i i it portrays them as sex addicts <laughs> realistically sex addicts depressed using grinder for you know the quick hookup which can't say that's completely unrealistic but jesus um does it happen a lot in this movie and nobody with the exception of aaron none of the gay characters are likable not a single fucking one. Aaron's the only one. And they're sure as hell quick to try and portray him as the bad guy for no reason. Um, it really... It, it, makes, it makes me want to stop being gay. 
<laughs> like that's what this movie really wants me to do it really wants me not to be gay like that i feel like this movie was made as a by a christian alt-right fucking organization just to just to make me straight again or something <laughs> it, it it just it doesn't make any fucking sense why in in billy fucking he goes on and on about representation for gay people in movies oh my god and that that scene where he 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 like goes on on off on aaron's mom about fucking teaching like third graders um uh about like lgbtq shit and we're supposed to be on his side. Oh, we're supposed to care? Like, what? No. Realistically, why is that in this movie? I, I here's here's thing here's something that's completely uh, never in a rom com. Politically lecturing your audience. Oh yeah. That, no, no, I that, can't think of a single rom com that does that. And I don't watch very many. Granted, but. I've seen quite a few. I don't enjoy them, but I've seen quite a few. Um, there was there was a time in my life where I was like someone that regularly watched that shit, and so I had to do what you had to do, so you watch it with them. And so there was like I, I've seen quite a few fucking rom coms. Unfortunately, I've seen I'm gonna regret admitting this on the internet, but all of the Twilight movies didn't enjoy them, but I've seen them. Um, well. Well, oh, oh, I, I imagine the later movies are definitely comedy. <laughs> They're definitely comedy films. I could not stand the first Twilight at all. But, <laughs> you know, here's the thing. Tying back this in back with the insufferable, unlikable gay cast, Billy being hy is hyper-political in this movie. Like, and it's not just the third grader shit. He, he brings up, like, political talking points in this movie. Like, I get it. Billy is very left-leaning. Very anti-Christian and anti-conservative. I get it. None of this needs to be in the movie. We sign up. Oh, the reason why we're not calling Billy Bobby, by the way, is because they almost exact the fucking. They act almost the exact same. Oh, it's it's one hundred percent is self insert because Billy in real life is just as insufferable as Bobby. <laughs> Billy Eckner is annoying as shit. He's he can't heavily at least political. Remove his annoying, like like when he acts, he's like such a bad actor that he can't even remove the his his annoying aspect of his personality to play a characterization of himself well considering he co-wrote the script he probably wrote this as a self-insert so he can get hooked up with i this. feel bad for whoever aaron's supposed to represent in billy actor's life i fucking kill myself oh i 10 bucks says billy just wrote this so he can have like a hunk top him oh okay like, like I, I but was... that's what i feel like this movie is because Bobby just acts straight up like Billy Eckner does on Twitter and on award shows and, you know, being it's heavily so political, you know, with the exception of the lisp, he's pretty much Don't just forget Billy the Eckner. schizo posting because Billy schizo Eckner's posting. character Bobby just schizo posts in the movie real oh, yeah. time. And acts like he he's he's fine being a single man hooking up with you know, others on Grinder, which He's copium, you mean his copium. His copium. <laughs> his copium for being a single 40-year-old man. Yeah. And getting denied grinder hookups because he shaved his ass improperly, I oh, guess. Oh, don't forget, let's even if we try and ignore the annoying aspect of Billy Eckner's character, there's his entitlement is um um he, he can't give fucking Aaron any goddamn space uh for just the smallest amount of time even when they weren't like dating dating yet so like before even before they were dating dating he was just um really clingy which made you uh think of the fact that he was annoying okay especially for aaron like seeing aaron deal with this insufferable insufferable little brick okay 
And so that frustrates you because you're seeing a character that actually isn't fucking shit put up with a character that is shit, but you're supposed to care for it. But you're supposed to care for that character, which is shit, but you don't want to. Um, and then you have... Uh, really, I think, yeah, that, that's all there is to his character, yeah. To, to Billy Eckner's character. That, that's it. Um... Well, you know why he's fucking putting up with Billy Eckner is because Billy is supposed to be the brat. Yeah. Which, I mean, it, it's not uncommon, I guess, for gay guys to go for these, I, I guess, bratty oh, bottoms. Let's, hold on, hold on. Hold that thought. He's also extremely impulsive. Audience, audience, catch this. The, the little breakup situation that happens in the week, spoiler alert they're not so good for each other but anyways the um little oh no let, actually correction not spoiler alert they're not so good for each other correction billy is terrible for aaron okay but anyways during the little breakup scene that happens in a rom it's like the one thing that is from rom-coms the one thing this movie shares with that's something i didn't is, know because i don't watch that many yeah. it's kind of a trope i guess they they some rom-coms will have those breakup scenes where they separate or they go part their own ways in the mail uh, lover, love interest, usually the sort of dumb hunk, right? Love interest goes, realizes that he, he wants that woman. Uh, but in this case, the, the insufferable gay twink. Um, and and chases after. And there's literally even the exact same kind of run scene that the uh, insufferable dumb retard uh, does to go to his, his beloved. Um, so that those are the only two traits that this movie actually shares with any rum bums, to make that clear. But he goes and does that. But that breakup specifically that I want to I want to point out, Billy Eckner's character literally does steroids as a get back from the breakup because he he thinks Aaron only likes muscular men. Okay. Oh God, so he this scene literally does fucking steroids. Pretends to be this macho dude. Goes to the gym, flirts. This is one of the many meaningless sex scenes that happen and so here's what happens he pretends to be a macho dude he says you want to go back to my place they go back to the place they fuck okay then he uses his real voice yeah that is an entire fucking thing that happened and it's never brought up again literally after billy gets kicked out of that like muscle jocks fucking apartment <laughs> literally never brought up again he literally kind of kind of does a creepo move and coerces this guy to sleep with him by just acting el macho and it's just never brought up again it's just that was never brought up again but Aaron feeling inadequate having okay context Aaron had this uh, high school crush, which never really, never really happened because he was acting straight at the time. He ends up coming out as gay on the internet, apparently, for some reason. That becomes a plot point. There's tension there, uh, between Aaron and that guy. Um, after the breakup shit happens, he... And this is after, mind you, this is after all the, this is after all the dumb political shit they threw at Aaron's mom. And that becomes a whole ordeal because rightfully so, Aaron does not want his fucking boyfriend to fucking throw politics into his mother's face at the fucking dinner table of a public restaurant. And all of it, it he... You know, he, he fucking feels inadequate in the fucking relationship. Does the dumbest move. Understandably dumb. Fucking... He fucking hooks up with his high school crush. And that becomes a big scene. And Aaron gets shit on for that. But Billy fucking hooking up with this gym rat. And basically coercing the guy unknowing that he was a, tw a twink with extreme body hair 
never brought up again. This movie has an immense double standard. And then Aaron is completely put in the wrong in entirely. The movie portrays it as Aaron is just completely in the wrong about this. When Aaron, with the exception of the fucking hookup with the, the you know, the high school crush, Aaron was basically in the right. Like, politically, nobody should put up with that no, in a romantic relationship if the other partner is not understanding that politics at the table, at the dinner table, at a public restaurant is not a good idea, especially when we're talking about, you know, when children should be able to know about LGBTQ, you know, that's, that's extremely uncomfortable. And it's such a big fucking talking point right now, especially with the don't say gay bill and all that, um, fucking extremely inappropriate and it's it's portrayed like Aaron oh. is just automatically oh, are we in a, no 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 Joe 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 we've, we've completely glossed over one thing that happens at the beginning of the movie what's that when he starts talking about gay sex and kids he said he the Billy Eckner's character does he then says something about to the to the parents that are sitting across from him about that oh my when god the parents are saying Oh, they've heard worse on TV. As he's pretty much talking about getting his fucking asshole. In 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 a living in a in in a child's playroom, talking to this this straight wife with the two children in there. Yeah. And this that ties into the the thing that was in the trailer. This is like the worst part of the trailer for Bros. The family does this bottom dance i i it's really just tea posing if anything but it's such a weird context thing to happen with a family of four two of which are children little children not exactly something that should be portrayed on film in general it's very uncomfortable to watch very, very uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable in the trailer. It was uncomfortable Mind here. Mind you, those kids are standing maybe a foot less behind Billy Eckner's character playing. It's, it's, ugh, it's... Oh my god. And... Oh, we might as well just get into the fucking, like, the whole... Let's just get into the like the romance between Billy Eckner and Aaron why not because there's so much there's so much stupid shit here there's so much stupid shit there's this this Billy Eckner character coincidentally trying to put this is on the board of this LGBT museum which is much like Billy Eckner heavily political shocker um, and <sighs> let's not forget the main characters on reoccur. Uh, I didn't mean I, this is a dick move to cut you off, but I think this is gonna make the people laugh. Mm -hmm. He has this weird reoccurring obsession of a conspiracy theory about Abraham Lincoln. I think yes, someone historically important being gay on the basis of they wrote letters back and forth to each other. It was Abraham Lincoln and somebody else that was historical. I don't but, know who. Yes, let's talk about the romance. Absolutely, there's a lot to unpack here. Oh yeah, fuck. So let's <sighs> rewind to let's just rewind to the gay bar scene where Billy is standing out by simply wearing a polo shirt in this jock hunk fucking abs and pectoral shirtless semi bondage fucking gay bar with which has one of the only few good jokes that this movie had which was also in the trailer actually all of the good jokes were just shown in the trailer 
If you wanted more good comedy, it's don't bother. Just watch the trailer. That's the only funny that happens. But anyways, another good joke that was in the, that was also in the trailer was at the beginning of the movie, and it was the bisexual dude saying that uh, of course the lesbians get like a longer period of time than they do. That joke. Oh yeah, the <laughs> bisexual awareness week was last week, and nobody talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> the Caitlyn Jenner <laughs> line was funny too. <laughs> yeah, and that that was also in the fucking uh, trailers. Yeah, all the good jokes are mainly at the beginning of the, the film. The Dumbledore on steroids line, the fucking, um, th the straight people had a nice run line. Those were all funny, and they're all in the trailer. And it the movie doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> no. Literally, you could watch the trailer and get a better experience than watching the movie. That's the sad part. That's the real fucking sad part about this. Because the romance is... Very the underwhelming. Is... It's, no, it's, not. it's disappointing. It's li the, the romance between these two characters is literally kinks and fucking mostly just that and there's some moments of intimacy and opening up to each other the best of which shocker comes from Aaron who has his own little character arc which isn't really expanded upon that much but I wish they did um where he he's this el macho stud and he's was afraid of embracing his queer side by making these little chocolates like he wanted to make like a, a little chocolate shop and there's these small like, like i guess hershey kisses homemade hershey kisses type beat he wanted to do never embraced it and he goes through that character arc i guess uh, i say i guess because it's about the arc happens between three scenes and between uh, at the end of these three scenes suddenly he has a chocolate shop beautiful amazing um but there's not really much interpersonally with the relationship between Aaron and Bobby there is just there's kind of chemistry ish Aaron As Aaron feels like a healthy athlete okay mhm mm and Billy, Billy feels like a tick. A tick that has landed itself on a healthy human host, ripe with blood. And the movie, strangely, starts with the tick. And we see it latch itself onto that healthy runner uh, in this race of life. Okay? It's a race of life. Aaron's a healthy runner. And, and Billy Eckner is a nasty little devious tick. And he latches himself on. Bites in. And holds tight. Then you watch this movie. You start to, you you are introduced to this young life, okay? And boom, you start to get sick, weaker, slower, and he doesn't know why. And he never does. <laughs> <laughs> he, there's no happy ending to this. He just gets settled with the tick. He, yeah, he doesn't find the tick. He settles with it. He accepts the tick and its fact that it's weighing him down and sucking the life out of that character okay and he settles with it gives up he, it, it's it's a defeat that is painful to watch um a submission that is disappointing to say the least yeah he for being the fucking you know the i, I guess the top or to you know anybody you know not versed in terms the man in the relationship Aaron just gets bitched around in this movie unrightfully so because Billy his inseparable ass hooks up with this dude at the gay bar they have fucking semi chemistry it's semi chemistry throughout they develop feelings for each other i guess it's 
beyond beyond the fact that Aaron just likes Garth Brooks and Bobby fucking trashes him for it and multiple sex scenes and Bobby trying to act smart that's a thing that's never developed I and Aaron having his chocolate sharp you know uh, character arc there's no chemistry there's nothing to wrap me into this relationship it's subpar could be developed so much better with so much more in a fucking short film and it does not pull me in it if anything by the time it gets to the part where the couple starts to have friction i.e billy starting to get more political and everybody's fucking face uh it it's like instead of being wrapped up in the romance and being worried for these two breaking up you're just kind of like dude why the fuck did you get with him in the first place and guys i get it brats they're bratty twinks they're cute except when they're billy actor but th they're cute and god for the life of me i it, it, aaron i don't understand why aaron even put up with billy in the first place like because he, he mentions he likes being challenged that's one of the plot points in the relationship he liked being challenged by billy it was a it, it i and i get if you want to be challenged but really by bobby the insufferable twink this insufferable human tick is is the guy you want to be challenged by <laughs> Oh my god. Like it makes no it, it makes no sense that this couple even got off the ground. Realistically in a real world environment, Aaron would have just had one grinder hook up with this guy and then never speak to him again. Ghost him, block him on grinder even. That's what realistically would happen because Billy is insufferable. And when the chemistry happens, it's cute, but it doesn't last long. And there's nothing that completely, complete, com <laughs> completely, <laughs> completely sucks you into this relationship. <laughs> You're just sitting there, bored out of your mind, waiting for a joke, waiting for chemistry. And when you get them, it's either underwhelming or it doesn't last long enough to give you that high. It's, yeah, that's perfectly well put. God, this movie. I can't even talk about, like, the score, which, you know, objectively is very bland, uh, or the cinematography or anything, like the editing. It's just, it's all watered down by Billy Eckner's performance and the story. All watered down. Oh, and then the mediocre modern take on credits at the end. Oh. Oh. That's more of a nitpick, though. But. But. Oh my god. And then there's the subplot with the LGBT museum. Oh, fucking. Honestly. I could have given a fuck less if that place burned the fuck down. It was such a, it's such an unimportant, unmeaningful subplot about this LGBT music. It's, it's really just a political statement. It's really, it's a, it's really just about pride. And it's like, yeah, I get that. But if you wanted to do the pride take, this movie should have been about closeted gay men then. Not this open shit. And because when you do the fucking uh, museum shit, like, I just, I, 
God, I just, I couldn't give a fuck less about the, any of it. About the Abraham Lincoln supposedly being gay or, you know, getting funding for the museum or these half, these pretty decent scenes with Aaron. Aaron almost saved this movie in some places, I'll say that. Um, but it, it's, there's, it, the museum just, I couldn't give a fuck less about it. I couldn't give a fuck less about that entire subplot it meant nothing all it all it served was that it could eventually happen and become a thing and that they could have a dreamworks animated film style dance party ending for the film served absolutely no purpose other than that you could honestly the movie could have been could have removed the LGBT museum completely and it would have been fine. It would have done nothing to the plot. It wouldn't have fucking mattered a damn bit. There is nothing about that that gives you any kind of meaning. There's nothing from it. It's just politics. This movie is unhealthily obsessed with politics, much like Billy Eckner, much like his character. It's obsessed with politics. And it's degrading. It's obsessed. It's obsessively choking you. Two hands clamped on your throat with it. And it's. I swear to God, this is going to inspire people to become anti gay. Like, this is going to inspire a new wave of anti LGBT because this movie portrays the LGBT with such shit. With these constant sex scenes, the piss poor romance, this constant politics that mean nothing, none of it means anything, half the half the movie shouldn't even fucking exist. None of this matters. It's depressing. You go out of the movie just feeling depressed. I don't know what Billy's going on about on Twitter. He fucking goes on about on Twitter about how this is... Audiences in LA where the theaters were booked up and he snuck in and they were laughing and shedding tears as the movie ended and all that. And I didn't get that one bit. This movie was completely undeserving of such a claim. It, it hurt, this hurts me on a visceral level. This should, this should, this, oh, just, oh, just, <laughs> oh, I, I'm beginning, I, I'm actually starting to get incredibly disorganized, much like the plot of this movie, which is very disorganized. It jumps from, yeah, it's all over the place. It jumps from Billy Eckner in the beginning, trying to get hookups and trying to live this single grinder hookup life, meeting Aaron having the to be uh in the making this lgbt theater happen those the romance subplot bleeds into that a bit with aaron helping secure funding by being a persuasive businessman yeah that was that was an that was that was a decent moment though well there's a lot of decent you actually proposed this and i think you and i were both on the same page with this this movie should have been about aaron yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, do you want to take over this part? Yeah, yeah. So, Aaron's character and the way the movie sets him up, he's to be this essentially a closeted gay man, okay? He's a very uh, sort of macho, muscular dude, but he, he's not, like, hostile. That's the thing. So he's the, the dumb hunk, right? The, the dumb hunk uh, I guess you could say like your stereotypical like gay relationship I, I don't fucking know I just know that he's the dumb hunk that, that's portrayed now the reason that's important is because he's kind he's pretty closeted and a lot of his stuff still even if he's going to gay bars now he grew up in a the movie portrays them to be a very very they probably are conservative household uh, but they aren't but that's the thing they don't um 
they do support Aaron though when they find out. Uh, so it's not like they they hated him because he was gay. It's just he had a distance with his family because of that. Now, that is much more interesting. And that is much more interesting than Billy Ector's character. And, and the reason why is because he has this desire for the 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 cupcake or cake related um the little chocolate you know, the candies. Yeah. The chocolate candies. The chocolate candies. That's right. The little baby so he chocolates had this des- they keep memeing on in the movie. <laughs> yeah. And he has that desire to do that, but he feels that that's um if I don't know if this too too stereotypically gay. You know, we're gonna use that. I don't know if you two is gonna be cool with the uh the old British cigarette, you know, word. But well, they they use that term in this movie, so <laughs> yeah, but he feels as though that's that's too that's too gay, okay? Um, the gamer word, so it's one of the gamer words, anyways. Mm-hmm. So he has these internalized feelings. And the movie could have easily been more about Aaron and his family, his struggle with his family, closeted, slowly sort of uh, accepting himself as he was, right? And finding a partner that isn't Billy fucking Eckner um, that helps him find himself and sort of accept that, hey, I'm going to be this dumb macho dude that's going to be making chocolate little candies. All of that would be much more interesting. We wouldn't have the... It would fix the annoying main character. It would give us a character that is maybe relatable for some people, but also much more interesting than Billy's character. And then... The movie wouldn't be so fucking shit. You wouldn't have the insufferable character that you just don't give a fuck for... You wouldn't have this secondary character that's actually a good developed character getting shit on by the insufferable character because that character that was getting shit on is now the main character is his story. Would have been so much better. Fixes all of that shit. And you still get the gay rom-com. It's a win-win. And honestly, Aaron could be paired up with either another hunky guy or an actual twink that isn't this you know no 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 remember how we mentioned earlier though the movie was there was this dude in high school Mm -hmm. that he had a crush on but he didn't think he was gay well audience listen here there's a specific scene okay where um aaron and uh billy actor's character just pretty much billy um are going to this movie uh, and they run in. Aaron runs into his old high school buddy he had a crush on, and he's with a girl. And I think it's like a couple of days later after that he comes that that dude that he had a crush on Aaron's crush, um, turned out to be gay and he came out as gay. Okay, now there you go. You take that element and you just drag it on over to my idea to well, actually our idea. You proposed and I agreed with it, so more so your idea. But you get my point. We take that piece, drag it on over, and there you have a complete gay rom-com. What's it? What's the synopsis now? We have a, a closeted gay man meets a dude. Maybe that dude doesn't work out. He runs into his old high school buddy. They both realize they're both gay. They both bring out the aspects of themselves, I guess, that would be gay or queer. And then, boom, you're gay rom-com. I write this shit better than they do. You write this shit better than Billy Eckner, that's for damn certain. Oh yeah, we we have com- you and I have completed a thing. You have you have you have you have decided that Billy that that Billy Eckner should fuck off and Aaron should be the main character. That was a great idea. And I propose, you know what? We just take that crush aspect and we make him. Oh my we god! Love it. You wanna you'd wanna know what would also be a good second like another version of this movie yeah yeah so you know how Aaron is kind of struggling with his queerer side yeah what if yeah 
he is paired with essentially this shaven, effeminate, like, femboy-type character. And they, yeah. they're struggling with a masculine side. Oh, okay. Yeah. Imagine the so dynamic they, they that, that could be done with this. Yeah, yeah, that would be a thousand times fold better than what what bros just don't be if that if that is even a thing well yeah like and, and plus there's a not really piece of toast that you threw out like three years ago and it just came back uh yeah and i mean there isn't much there aren't many femboys in fucking media to be honest and it would throw a little bit of that into the spotlight which you know if for all this movie wants to bring a lot of queer culture into the spotlight kind of forgot about femboys kind of forgot about them just a little bit <laughs> he, he took that personally oh i have a confirmation bias <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know if you could tell i might like femboys but anyways um yeah uh, it's it's kind of depressing because we just wrote a premise for a gay rom-com in four to in five to ten minutes that are much better than this movie we hate the genre and we know how to write <laughs> it better than billy fucking eckner Who's only really known for that being that one guy in Parks and Recreation, and I don't know how good he was in that, but I I doubt he was any good in Parks and Recreation. Um, I don't. He, you look sad. I remember watching Parks and Recreation, and I don't even remember him. That's how forgettable he is. He was probably just some st straight character that was buddied up with Chris Pratt. I. I only watched one episode of Parks and Recreation. <laughs> um, fuck. Here's also another thing. In the promotion of this movie, they promoted it as the first gay rom-com produced by a major motion picture studio. Which was, which would be great. If that was true. Because... And I have not seen this movie, so I have no idea if it's good or not. Love, Simon. Came out at least five years prior. Did the same thing, but better. Without being so in-your-face queer like this movie is. is completely in-your-face about the queerness, which is almost unpalpable. And I'm queer. <laughs> <laughs> and... It, it, it made more money at the box. It, it, it actually turned a profit for the studio. For 20th Century Fox. Which is also a major motion picture studio. Uh, before they got bought out by a major motion picture studio. Um, <laughs> conglomerates and, buying conglomerates. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. And this movie... God, it, I, I, don't, I don't even think he's, it's made... 20 million yet and its budget is 22 million it, it had an abysmal opening weekend and you can tell why because this movie is garbage and it's disorganized which is probably why i'm having such a hard time organizing my thoughts while talking about it this movie is so disorganized it's a disorganized mess i mean within the span of within the span of 15 minutes you jump from Billy Eckner having a podcast, um, talking about his shitty sex life, um, to the LGBT theater, I mean, museum, to meeting Aaron, to fucking back at the, and, and then the movie kind of jumps between the, the, uh, the Aaron love story and the you know, the gay museum and does it poorly 
And it, it's just constantly bouncing very disorgan in a very disorganized way between multiple subplots and scenes. And God, I just, at, at the end of the day, you just stop caring about a lot of the things. I don't care about the museum. I don't care about, I don't care about the whole political subplot with the mother, Aaron's mother and, you know, teaching third graders about the LGBT and with fuck man it just none of that shit matters none of that shit I signed up for like I want like I'm somebody who does not watch rom-coms we established this earlier the fact you sucked me into this is already proof enough that you have a decent concept but I came into the movie and I wanted the goddamn queer romance. You gave me fuck all about it. You gave me you gave me more queer sex scenes than queer romance. The 900 with the the weird fucking like couple that Aaron is like asked to like fuck with in threesomes and shit like that 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 happens before they I might have said this before, but I'm going to say this again. That the sex scenes between them, one of them feels like there's no like romantic uh, attraction between these two people. Like, like as if Billy got on fucking Craigslist, grinder, and requested that someone who loves wrestling and feet come and fuck him, and they did. And that's what it feels like. Like that's that scene in particular. It doesn't. Uh, and then, the, and then he got one of the side actors from Magic Mike. <laughs> 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 That's literally Aaron's actor is just a side character from Magic Mike. Which he, oddly enough, Aaron looks like he, his role should have been done by Channing Tatum or something. Yeah. Wait, so Aaron's actor was in... He was in Magic Mike. <laughs> uh. The irony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Fuck this movie. Fuck this movie, honestly. And it doesn't even matter with the fucking, like, the whole Olivia damn Byrne, cast being Olivia LGBT. Byrne. Like, the whole cast is LGBT, which is probably why there isn't a big-name star, because, um, not a lot of big-name stars are queer or LGBT. Uh, still, the vast majority of the A-list is straight, white cis and when you sort of limit yourself to being like 100 percent queer cast and all of that which is i'm pretty sure that's breaking diversity laws but whatever um there's it, it doesn't fucking matter with it because there's no star to capture the people who give a fuck about star power so you couldn't even bring that to the picture. Like, if you had... I, uh, I don't fucking... Like, like, if you had... Aaron as, like, Henry Cavill or something. It just fucking wouldn't happen, but... It, like, that would at least bring in numbers. This movie didn't have a big-name star, which probably didn't help why it sunk at the box office... It was insanely niche. It's insanely queer. Like, it's incredibly niche. It tackles things about the LGBT, like the polygamy, which is like running gag in this movie for no fucking reason. It's actually kind of weird. And the politics, which nobody wants to see that in a rom-com. It jumbles all of this shit, plus being an R-rated movie, plus having tackling, like, the the underground queer culture with the fucking uh the the semi bondage and the poppers also, and most the fisting queen shit are rated to to my knowledge what most rom coms aren't R rated oh hardly at all it's real it's it's a real PG thirteen um medium. Nine times out of ten. Very rarely is it an R-rated um, film. In an era... Mind you, rom-coms don't do well at the box office nowadays. 
everybody's moved on to like superhero movies at this point collectively as we as a species have just co- collectively moved on to uh marvel movies kids just want to play with space toys now okay <laughs> they don't they don't want to fuck around with these like the era of movies like Annie Hall beating out Star Wars for best p- picture fucking gone all right, we've moved on since then. This is the era of fucking big budget blockbusters and space toys. And this movie just doesn't belong in this new time. Despite being political. Despite being very openly queer and openly niche. Just doesn't belong. It's just, it's such garbage and it can't pick itself up from the fact that it's not going to capture a lot of people it failed to capture its target audience me my boyfriend and the cumster (laughs) oh my god yeah that that's the sad part oh my god we actually talked about this more than the woman king (laughs) We talked about this movie more than The Woman King. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Oh. Fuck this. Yeah, it, that's was a, it was a good, solid day afterwards of us just like, it, not even nitpicking, just absolutely laying into this movie. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's sad because it pissed away. It's perfectly reasonable opportunity to showcase something that isn't normally seen in cinema and they make it political and they make it incredibly niche and they have an unlikable main character none of that was gonna save nothing could save the movie not even Aaron as much as I really wanted to like like this movie uh, it was pissed it, it, it pissed it, it, it sat me down and it pissed on me. That's a great metaphor this, uh, for this movie. Just getting pissed on. You're shamed for even watching the movie. Almost. You're, you're, you're degraded as you watch the movie. You just you just take in the piss. I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stop talking about piss. That that's gonna be that's gonna be it. Oh my god. Do you have anything else to say about this, or...? No. No, I I think... I think... You know what? To show that this, is, this has gone full circle, um, I'm going to end these on the same words I started. This movie made me want to commit a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. That that's so. That's gonna be this sort of two part uh, intro to this, um, I guess, podcast ish style pre recorded talk thing. Um, I hope you guys like it. I'm not expecting this to do big in the algorithm. I don't give a shit if it does big in the algorithm. I'm you know, it's just shit that I think would be interesting to put out. And it's, you know, it's solid content, you know, I think, at least. Of mostly talking, but in conversation. But, you know, it's it's of things that I think, you know, people could actually, you know, be interested in for more than a few months, you know. Which is not what I can say for most of my content. Uh, you'll probably be seeing more of this if anybody has a specific idea as to what we could talk about you could always put in the comment section uh uh honestly akumu if you wanted to put a recommendation of what film to talk about next you could always just hit me up with one uh okay okay as long as it's not a siberian film I will uh. I will happily rewatch I will happily watch through at least 10 times consecutively 
Freddy got fingered before I would ever watch a Siberian film. Oh, yeah. That movie is so... Oh, my God. Yeah, but that's basically it. I'll, uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. Ah! Say goodbye, Akuma. Goodbye. Pog. I was...